So before we start the video, I just want to mention that you can get access to over a thousand medical and USMLE multiple choice questions on our website. New questions are added weekly, so just click the link in the description below to get instant access to them. In today's video, we're going to be talking about trigeminal neuralgia, which is a chronic neurofacial pain disorder, and it's associated with sharp and electrifying severe pain due to the trigeminal nerve. It's been suggested that this condition is probably one of the most painful conditions a human can experience and it's even been nicknamed the suicide disease because of the extreme pain. Let's make a quick overview of the anatomy and pathway of the trigeminal nerve. I'll make a separate video discussing this in more detail so I'm just going to keep the basics in this video. What you need to know for now is the trigeminal nerve has three branches. They are the ophthalmic, the maxillary and the mandibular branches. So the ophthalmic and maxillary branches both have only sensory innervation, which means the nerve fibers are responsible for only transmitting signals of sensation. So this is things like pain and pressure. Whereas the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve not only provides sensory innervation, but also motor innervation, which means they carry impulses to the muscles of mastication to allow for chewing and opening and closing the mouth. The cause of trigeminal neuralgia is actually unknown, but there's been a lot of research on potential causes, so we'll discuss a few of them now. The first idea is due to nerve compression. So this means that there's an artery nearby along the pathway of the trigeminal nerve and this is pressing onto the trigeminal nerve and this is causing the extreme pain. Some scientists actually disagree with this because they say throughout the body there's numerous places where a nerve is in close contact to a vessel. But on the other hand, when certain surgeries are done to separate the trigeminal nerve from a blood vessel using a barrier, in a lot of patients, this results in resolution of the pain. Another cause of trigeminal neuralgia has been said to be due to a space-occupying lesion. And this is a growth which occurs inside the skull, which might be benign or malignant, but it causes compression again of the trigeminal nerve. Multiple sclerosis may be another cause of trigeminal neuralgia. So multiple sclerosis is a condition which involves the formation of plaques or lesions along the nerves in the central nervous system. There's also damage to the myelin sheath, which is what insulates and surrounds a nerve. But the interesting thing to note is not every patient who has multiple sclerosis will experience trigeminal neuralgia. In fact, a study which I'm gonna link below suggested that those who do experience trigeminal neuralgia who have multiple sclerosis had a higher concentration of these plaques and lesions along the tract of the trigeminal nerve. The symptoms a patient will experience with trigeminal neuralgia is an extreme, sharp and electrifying pain which happens suddenly. The neuralgia can occur along any branch of the trigeminal nerve but the maxillary and mandibular branches are most commonly affected. The pain attacks can occur in cycles occurring 5 to 10 times a day and certain movements like chewing gum or brushing your teeth may trigger an attack. Trigeminal neuralgia has a predilection to women over the age of 50, and a milder form of the disease called atypical trigeminal neuralgia also exists where these attacks occur but the pain is less severe and it's associated with more tingling and burning sensations as opposed to extreme pain. So trigeminal neuralgia can be misdiagnosed as quite a few different diseases. There's quite a lot, so I'm only going to discuss three. So the first one is dental pain. So the difference between trigeminal neuralgia and dental pain is that trigeminal neuralgia is not responsive to heat and temperature like the teeth are. So an acute form of pulpitis might result in severe pain, which might seem like trigeminal neuralgia because of the intensity but it comes alongside a tooth which is likely to have like carious lesions extending to the pulp, which isn't necessary for trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia can also be misdiagnosed as various temporomandibular joint disorders, but the key thing to note is with trigeminal neuralgia, the pain is paroxysmal, which basically means very sudden, and it's an electrifying pain, which is very, very severe 
With temporal mandibular joint disorders, the pain is more of a dull sensation, and in fact the location of the pain is outside of the tract of the trigeminal nerve, so it's not exactly in the same area. Trigeminal neuralgia can be misdiagnosed with another two diseases called SUNCT and SUNA, which both have very long abbreviations. The first one is short-lasting unilateral neuralgiform headache attacks with conjunctival injection and tearing. And SUNA stands for short-lasting unilateral neuralgiform headaches with cranial autonomic symptoms. The reason that both of these diseases can be associated with trigeminal neuralgia is just because it's a type of facial pain and it occurs randomly and it's paroxysmal in nature. But they also come alongside issues with the eye and this includes things like edema and swellings, lacrimation and nasal congestion which doesn't happen in trigeminal neuralgia. So now we can talk about the treatment methods of trigeminal neuralgia and they can be divided into a pharmacological approach which involves prescribing drugs and a surgical approach as well. So medications like carbamazepine which is an anticonvulsant can be given or phenytoin and gabapentin. The surgical methods of treatment can either be non-destructive or destructive in nature, which depends on whether they cause damage to the nerve. So non-destructive methods include microvascular decompression, and this is where the nerve is separated from the surrounding vessels, which is causing the compression, and this can be done with barriers like Teflon. The destructive methods basically aim to cause damage to the trigeminal nerve, so it can't transmit pain signals but also there's going to be a loss of sensation as well because of the nerve damage. And these methods include glycerol injections, balloon compression and radiofrequency thermocoagulation rhizotomy.